Creative Media Vault in Tokyo, Japan. Okay, I am back. Um, I am going to continue streaming, um, continue my stream from before. Uh, <laughs> however, I only have about like one hour, so it's been a pretty busy day. I had a few good meetings um, and, um, you know, got a couple of things done, but uh, I also had to go shopping and do laundry and my laundry machine is broke and I had to like rush and I'm drying my clothes now. So, um, <laughs> So I didn't really have like a lot of time to actually dedicate to finishing this character. So what I'm gonna do is I have I have my final load of laundry in the drying machine uh, at the coin laundry right now. That means that technically I have about maybe 30 minutes to like before I have to go get my stuff right. So I'm gonna try to finish mm -hmm. the base uh, and the base animation setup for this character within 30 minutes, right? So this is gonna be my 30 minute challenge to see if I can finish like Doza, right? Um, mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do right now is um, before um, I actually had uh, Dozer's, uh, this character's name is Dozer, that's why I keep on saying that word. Um, hold on, let me cut this down. Um, before, I actually had Dozer's um, head, um, um, the head actually had the uh, the grooves for his hair. Well, um, after like uh, thinking about it, I think I might want to add some animation to his hair too, right? So instead of making the uh, hair, hairline um, on the actual face, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and round out. Um, hold on, let me copy this first. I'm going to go ahead and round out uh, the rest of his head. That way, uh, will give that'll give me a little bit of room to move his head, uh, move his hairline around. So uh, maybe, for example, if he's taking damage, I might want his hair to go backwards. Or I might even want to like uh, reverse his hair forward, like when he's taking a hit and his hair comes forward. So to give myself more uh, options of versatility, I am going to go ahead and put the hairline on his actually uh, hairline on his actual hair this time, right? So his head uh, outline is going to look something like this. It doesn't need to be perfectly round or anything like that, because this is a uh, 2D character, so we can always change it. So he's going to kind of look like that. Ooh, that actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that there in case I want to remove his hair permanently or give him a shortcut later um, Because I might be using the same character for an animated series, right? All right So now that we've done that what I need to do is I no need to go into his hair. So We've uh, I'm gonna lock his uh, face Layer and I'm gonna go to his hair layer now. I went through all the trouble of like uh, making his hair layer um you know, a little bit flat at the bottom because I wasn't really considering animating his hair for this particular game, that's why. So, um, to go through and actually create his hairline at this point would be kind of Mendel's side. So, I'm gonna cheat. If you notice, what I did is I copied the uh, face layer first and now I am just going to, um, like, paste that right on top of his hair layer, right? And uh, what this is going to do, you'll notice I have like uh, two layers of pink. Uh, this layer of pink here is actually biting into and uh, going to cut out his hairline from this green. And to do that, I'm just going to click on it and click X. And now when I click the green, you'll notice that his uh, hairline magically appears uh, on his hair layer. So that's a really, really quick way, you know, um, if you've uh, kind of put work into like adjusting lines on a certain layer and you decide that you would rather those uh, lines be on a different layer this is a quick way to do it just copy the um copy the layer that you were previously on um lock it and then go to the layer that you want to cut out paste your uh cut out on top of that and then hit delete and that gives you like uh, all of the results that you previously had all right so that was the way of about like two minutes because I just decided I wanted my honey badger to have like rockabilly hair. All right, so now let's go back into making his, we're still on his uh, face by the way. So um, I'm gonna go back into here. Okay, so his hairline is done, his face is done. Um, we've got his uh, scars here, his battle scars because this is a hard, uh, you know, fighting little dude. Battle scars, all right. No, I need to do it. Get back over here. All right, so we got his battle scars here, and on top of his battle scars, we're gonna go ahead and put his glasses. Um, now you'll notice in the pinup version of the character, 
you can kind of see his, uh, I did color his eyes under this. His eyes are actually orange. Um, but for the game version, uh, since he's going to be a little, like, kind of a little small to mid-range character running around on screen, we don't really have to, like, put so much detail into, like, you know, uh, getting people to see his eyes be beyond the uh, glasses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer, and this will, I keep calling them glasses, but I mean they're goggles. So he's kind of like Vin Diesel from that movie Pitch Black. Um, goggles, yeah. And so we're just going to quickly create his goggles here. And uh, I might, mm, yeah, I don't want to do too much animation for this character because uh, this is going to be a shooter game, uh, uh, sorry, a 2D platformer game. So I might, um, I was thinking about maybe having his goggles to be removable, but I'm not going to go through the trouble of doing that. Um, so I'm just going to select a black and make sure that I'm on the square tool. And I'm going to draw in here and I left my line on. Okay. What I'm talking about is when I draw, you'll see this little yellow uh, line around here. For um, generally for box uh, and uh, box style drawing, you don't want that. So we'll go ahead and turn the line off here, and just like uh, click this box here, and then go back to our uh, forward color and make sure that that's black. And you'll notice I'm using transparent black, right? Um, that transparent is just there so I can like uh, see through everything and then we're going to uh, bump the um, opacity up to 100% later right so in traditional fashion we're just going to kind of go around the uh, edges of his glasses here and if one of the layers is kind of getting in the way you can always like kind of hide that so I'm just gonna hide these three layers because they're kind of jama for what I'm working on uh, yeah color wise yeah, and I could just like put this here and then like kind of round them out a little bit. And, uh, uh oh, I think kid number one has just come home. Yeah, which means daddy doesn't have a lot of time before people get hungry. Um, <laughs> all right. Go. Yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of round these out uh, in a way that, you know, I kind of like them. Yeah, my oldest son doesn't eat that much, but my youngest son eats everything. So when he comes home, he's hungry. He's that's why he's almost bigger than me. Yeah, knock it off. All right. Yeah, so this will be yeah, this will be pretty good uh, for the first goggle. Mm. And um, you notice I'm right now I'm not making too many um, not making too many movie clips right now. All right, put this right here. Ah, somebody's talking to their grandma. All right, here we go. All right, so here's the lenses of this thing. I'll round this out a little bit more here. Yeah, all right, so there's the lenses. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is, mm, yeah, I think I am gonna make these into a movie clip. Yeah, just in case I want to do something funky with his eyes later. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit F8, and I'm going to turn this into um, Dozer's, uh, well, actually, I can't have that in here. Dozer's goggles. I really cannot type on this new Mac. I'm so used to having, like, a larger screen. All right, so Dozer's goggles. Um, I might actually copy this to, and go back to the previous layer, and then go back here. Um... Mm, I might go ahead and leave these, put these as his eyes, uh, under. No, I don't want to use that. Get off my screen. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, those are eyes. Um, so when I'm doing, like, a character rigging and stuff like that, a lot of times, um, I'm gonna send this to the back, by the way. Uh, so if you put, um, right now his eyes are on top of his goggles. So before that, let me go ahead and turn them white uh, in here. Yeah. So right now his um, goggles are in front of his glasses. Uh, when you're working in Animate, if you put something on top of um, something on this, puts an object on top of another object in the same layer, and you want to kind of reverse that um, that order, all you have to do is right click, and go to Arrange, and go to Send to Back. Boom. And now you'll notice that. Uh, 
his white eyes are behind his goggles, right? So yeah, this gives me more options in case I decide I do want to animate his eyes later, um, which kind of happens like sometimes. Maybe uh, for a victory pose, I might have him like flip his goggles up where you can actually see his eyes. Um, I might not do that for this game, but there's a possibility that I could. So this is just a little bit of built-in safety so I don't have to like, you know, worry about trying to do it. Um, like make separate eyes for him later. All right, so now we're in the goggles, um, like movie clip. And uh, these, all of these movie clips can be animated. Uh, and that's what's so good about uh, me doing this in animate. All right, so I'm going to, I just created a new layer and I'm going to drag this behind the lens layer. So these, this top layer will be the lens. I spelled lens wrong, but I don't care. It's my character. This is like the future version of the spelling, so shut up. All right, so <laughs> this will be the rubber part <laughs> because I don't know what else to call it. It's just the rubber part. All right. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, for the lenses, I think I'm going to uh, cheat on this one a little bit. I'm just going to like uh, copy and paste it in the same spot. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to copy and paste it in the same spot. I'm going to copy and paste this on another layer. I use a lot of layers uh, for a lot of reasons because I might want to give my characters extra effects, right? And um, if I don't put everything on separate layers, then it can kind of become a problem later. So um, I have two layers of um, lenses. So this top layer of lenses, we're going to use the Q key and shrink it down a little bit. Now, I'm holding the Q key, and I mean, I hit, I click the Q key, and or I hit the Q key, and now I'm holding the Shift key. And when I hold the Shift key, you'll notice that it lets me um, scale inwards uh, while keeping the same um, same dimensions. So that's, uh, if I wasn't holding the Q key, it would, like, try to scale all funky, right? Like, um, but by holding the Q key, it lets me uh, scale with the proper dimensions. And I'm going to do the same thing for this uh, eye over here, right? Because he is going to have a bit of a um, a border around these. I said a bit of a border, not that damn much. All right. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now uh, that will those will be his like real lenses. We're going to change the color of these, and we're going to make them a uh, lighter gray so that they kind of stick out from the rest of his. Um, and there's no way I'm gonna finish this character in like 30 minutes, but yeah, I was just that was just kind of wishful thinking. All right, so now we're gonna go down to our rubber part layer, and uh, you know we're just gonna quickly draw this using uh, my using a kind of a, a darker gray. Don't worry about the lines because we're gonna do that in a little bit anyway. All right, and uh, hold on, let me see. Yay! All right. So again, I start with a box, and I'm just going to quickly place all of this here. And what time is it? Oh. Right, and I might curve this up a little bit like this. Yeah, I think the curve makes it look a little bit better. All right. And for the other side, we don't have to worry because we're not seeing things. Okay, now that curve is starting to get on my nerves. Uh, this curve is okay. We'll leave the bottom one. Yeah, like he's wearing some like really cool honey badger shades. All right. So uh, here's like what his glasses kind of look like at the moment. His goggles look at like at the moment, and we do have this little section over here to do. So let's go ahead and uh, drop that in here uh, with another box and uh, move this over here. Move this over here, move this over here, and move this over here. And I notice I don't have any music playing. Hold on. Yo, why don't what happened to my music? I was playing something. Uh, da da da. Hmm, genres. So I can't play any like um any copyrighted music here. So. I don't want to get copyright strike on my account. Uh, does this sound like drawing music to you guys? Okay, but I like her voice, so we'll we'll play her. This is a song called "Hold You One Last Nantoka," 
and it's by Mind Me Legion. Hmm. So, yeah. So we'll just like uh, continue doing our artwork to this. So. Ah, crap. And the reason that happened is because I didn't lock my layer. Um, so. Okay. Now I lock my layer, so. So we're gonna drag this one up here. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's not really too much to this, to be honest. So, a lot of people think, oh, I must, like, go to art school. I've never been to art school. I didn't learn any of this stuff in school. Like, uh, actually, a lot of stuff I learned in school, I would consider to be useless anyway. But, uh, I never learned any of this stuff at school. I just, like, you know, learned it all on YouTube. Or, I did do, like, uh, some graphics design when I was in the military for, um, for our ship homepage. But that was all, like, more... <laughs> Uh, like really more military tones but yeah you know really hardcore stuff all right so here's what is the uh, glass look like mm, the outline and now what we're, we have to do is we're going to um, add some lines to this so I tend to do my box and uh, my box um, box sculpting without lines first because like if you do it with lines it can kind of get mental side later so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the stroke and um, we're going to tur turn the stroke on and select a black color. Um, and I can check to see, let's see, where's my uh, line tool? This is mine. Ah, here's my ink bottle tool, yeah. All right, so we're just going to press this. Oh, okay. So right now, uh, the stroke is, the stroke is a little bit, smaller than I would like. So I'm going to change the stroke size, maybe uh, up that up a little bit to about maybe uh, three or four. For game characters, not that damn much. For uh, game characters, um, you want the stroke to be kind of thick uh, because of the background that the character will be interacting with. So like if you have a thicker outline around the character, it's easier to identify them uh, in a scene. You don't want the lines to be like super thick, but you know, at least, well, you might depending on the type of game. But, um, you know, just something where the, that, um, where you can identify the character from the background elements is all you need. All right. And here are the lines for his, uh, goggles. And I'm just going to uh, use the line tool, draw a couple of these guys and curve them out. Okay. Previous song was cool. This one's going to put me to sleep. Skip. All right. That was a little bit too peaceful. All right. All right. Yeah. So I'm just using the curve to like kind of curve these out. All right. Yeah. yeah I mean, basically, his goggles are done. <laughs> like with this. So uh, right now they don't look like they're done because it, everything is transparent. So uh, what, in order to fix that, I can just go here and then like. Um, Click on the transparency here and swap that to 100. Boom. And I will do the same thing for all of the other elements here. Swap that over to uh, 100. And this here. Guess what? Yeah, to 100 to you too. All right. And also here and uh, this area here will also be 100. So uh, drawing, I recommend when you're doing this, uh, start drawing your character using transparent transparent box shapes and that gives you a lot more control over uh you know uh how the uh should i put a line in here no. mm. okay uh for the inside line i think i'm going to kind of shrink this one a little bit um so that line um line width is a little bit too heavy for that second lens because it's kind of farther away from his um from his face so Hmm. Okay, that didn't work as expected. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna switch this one back down to one. No? Uh, okay, 0 0.5. Let's see if that works any better. Mm, no, it doesn't. Okay, I'm just gonna kill that line. And maybe kill this line. Yeah, I think I'm gonna kill all the lines for this one. Mm. 
because uh, he's going to have what, a little bit of a uh, glaze over his eyes anyway. All right. And so, uh, yeah. So you'll notice that you cannot see his eyes under this right now. This is on purpose. But in case I want to animate, uh, uh, do an animation where he takes his glasses off. That's why I did, that's why I copied his eyes and put them under this anyway. All right. So now, um, we're going to make one more layer. And this will be for like, you know, kind of like the highlights on, of his glasses, you know, like the reflection. Um, and uh, a lot of this, uh, you will be doing some post, when you're making characters, you will be doing some kind of post work uh, on their uh, art a lot of times. But uh, doing it in Adobe Anime gives you a lot more flexibility and freedom to kind of choose what you want to do with the character. Um, so for this, I could uh, add his highlights and like, make them pretty uh, in post work uh, when I create a sprite sheet. Uh, and, um, and I could transport that over to like Procreate on iPad and just color that in. But, you know, because I want everything to animate, um, you know, as one unit, it's just better for me to do it uh, in, in Flash. And then I can kind of change it if I need to or add effects to it. All right. So uh, for this, I'm going to make sure that I turn his line off again. And I'm going to um, choose a lighter color box. And uh, for this particular box, we're going to set the animation back down to 50. And I'm just gonna like draw a little box here. Actually, that's a little bit too dark. Uh, I want a lighter color transparency. Yeah, transparent color. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here, move this over here, move this over here. Can you guess where the next one going? Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> I'm moving it right here. And then I'm gonna put like a little, like, uh, I'm gonna hold my, hold on. Let me make sure I've got the right layer selected. Yeah. All right, because I don't want to move my other layers. I'm going to hold my options key, and I'm going to pull this in here. Pull this in here. Actually, I might move this one down a little bit, yeah. Because we're going to give them like, a little wave pattern. And then I'll move this over, over here, move this one over here. And uh, then I'm going to use my curve to kind of curve everything out. Just like so. And I mean, like, this is going to be a moving character on, in the game. So it's not like, you know, your player is going to be, like, stopping and, just, like, staring at his, like, goggles. Unless they're weird. Um, <laughs> I guarantee, yeah, actually, somebody is going to do that. Um, <laughs> probably some, like, animator, and he's going to mail me, like, that's not the proper way to animate glasses. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's just something, like, simple like this, you know, where people, uh, let's go, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I'm gonna have to move this down a little bit, because that's annoying me. Alright, there we go. That looks a little bit better, a little bit smoother, right? Alright, and, like, I don't want to waste time, like, uh, drawing all of these over again, so I'm just gonna copy that and paste in place. And move it. You got to move it, move it. You got to move it, move it. Hit the Q key, and shrink it down. And yeah, it didn't really scale that way I wanted it to, but you're gonna need. All right, I might move him a little bit more over this way. All right, and since we still have our corners available, we can just like kind of like uh you know, like relocate them to wherever we need them. Um, yeah, something like this is actually okay. Um. And then, like, if I wanted to, I could add another, kind of like another uh, effect to it by, like, uh, get, e putting even a lighter color. But this is going to be, like, Jubun for him. Maybe. Okay, there's something else I'm going to do. But uh, I have to get my laundry soon, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. So I'm just copying and pasting in place with this one. And I'm going to go to the modify and flip horizontal. And that didn't work because I just, that didn't paste it in place, sorry. Right. Uh, yeah, I think I want these facing in a similar direction. But I am going to change the uh, rotation a little bit. Yeah, and uh, I shrink this down here. No, not like that. Uh, move them over here a little bit more. Shrink them down here. And... No, that doesn't look good. We're just going to use another box because, like, the angle of his other lens is the problem. So let's go ahead and zoom into this. Let's 
So I think a lot of people on Twitch are like, yeah, man, this is a just chat channel, but like, uh, he's like talking about animation and complex stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's all good. This is my time, my first time using like a just chat. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad that not so many people are here <laughs> at the moment. That gives me time to focus on my work. Hmm. So, I mean, I do do this for fun, but this is my job, actually. Like, um, so I do have clients, you know, that come to me and they're like, hey, you know, can you make a character for us and stuff like that? You know, like a game character or like, you know, little funky stuff. Or they might want to sell a product. Uh, I'll keep that one kind of wide. Yeah. And then for, uh, this one will... Nah, I don't know. All right. This one is going to be kind of weird, too. So I'm just going to use another box. And I might actually just uh, curve this last one outward. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to curve this one outward a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, just to uh, kind of emphasize that this is a um, convex. Uh, con yeah, convex shape. Um, like convex concave convex concave uh just to like uh to highlight the fact that this is a uh convex shape uh meaning like rounded outward uh <laughs> i'm losing my english here um i'm going to put another layer on top and i am actually i'm going to use the uh classic brush tool and with this classic brush tool what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick a choose a white color yeah, choose a white color, and I'm just gonna draw not like that. Eh, instead of the yeah, instead of that one, I think we're just gonna go with the line tool. Right, my line is still black right now, so I'm gonna choose a white line, and I'm going to uh, choose maybe a line width of 1.5. I think should do it. And I'm just gonna like run the line right through here. And I'm going to curve this line out. Yeah, curve this line out. And uh, that from the player's view, that's going to make it look like his lenses are kind of curved outwards. And that's the effect that I want to kind of go for. And for the same, same thing here, I'm just going to give his uh, eyes a little bit of a smiley face. And I could line it up over here, so I'm just going to... Uh, do it like right. No, like stop trying to auto save while I'm trying to move a line. I hate it when it does that. It just, all right, so move this right here, move it right kind of here, and then curve it not too much, just enough to where people kind of get the point. All right, and uh, if you're having trouble moving your lines exactly where you want them, you can hit the select tool and you'll find the sub select tool. And this will allow you to click on a single point, and then you can just like uh, use your um, keys, your um, your directional keys to kind of move that point, particular point, to where you want it. Ah, oh, this song is kind of cool. Yeah, I do kind of want it to line up a little bit with uh, this one over here. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so we have a much cooler looking uh, honey badger, and like I could add some lens flare and stuff like that if I wanted to, but I don't want to because it's not necessary for uh, this particular character. All right, so uh, here we go. So there's our honey badger. There's his uh, glasses, and his face is severely discolored. So I am going to uh, import a um, color palette for this uh, in a little bit. Or actually, I might already have his color palette uh, in here. Yeah, this is kind of what he looks like right now, rocking around with little uh, little glasses on. Mm. All right, now at this point, um, this is basically where I would start doing like the line art. Um, there is one other uh, area that we could do for him, which I think we're going to go ahead and do for him actually, at, on his face, and um, that will be his mouth area. So I'm gonna unlock his face. And I'm going to uh, switch back to the selection tool. And I'm just going to click this. I'm going to turn this and his um, and his battle scars into a movie symbol. So uh, face with scars. There we go. 
right, now I'm going to go into this, like, kind of scope into this, I guess, um, what we call it. So I'm scoping into this, and then I am going to add another layer. And uh, this is the area that I'm going to put. So I'm going to put his nose and his, um, well, his snout, I guess you would call it. Uh, I'm going to put his snout and uh, his eyes on this layer. All right, uh, I've got a couple more minutes before I have to like do my special stuff, which is like pick up laundry and cook dinner, because I'm a good dad. Ah, darn it, I left my line on, yeah. All right, there you go. All right, so yeah, same thing, box. Uh, yes, use a box to drag everything out. So like I said, this is really, really, a really, really simple way to do complex characters. It normally doesn't take me that long either, but I'm also like uh, chatting while I'm doing this this time, so. But usually this process is fairly quick for me. Alright, and I'm gonna curve his, uh, uh, actually no, that's not a good uh, curve, so I've got, where's his, uh, yeah, got this thing right here. I'm then going to add another point right here and kind of drag it over. And now that should give me Nope, that didn't work. Oh, because I hit. Move this down over here. Okay, now I can move this up here. Move this over here. And that'll give me a little bit more of what I'm... Of the angle that I'm looking for. Okay. And we'll and curve this one this way. Check it out. Uh, could give him a little bit more of a curve right here, I think. All right, there we go. And then I, we're just going to quickly draw the nose and draw the tooth on here. And I am going to make a movie symbol out of this, too. Because I might want his snout and his mouth to move, too. So, uh, those are snout. So, um, this might look a little bit Mendelssai, like uh, it takes a lot of time. But actually, um, it's a good idea to do this because it gives you so much versatility in case you want to animate different parts of the character in different ways at any time, right? Or in, in case you just want to uh, swap a different part uh, as your character design kind of, um, like, evolves. So there have been times when, like, yeah, I was working on a character and then, like, I, and I needed to totally just change one little small part. But because I, um, because I did, I drew the character in, like, um, Photoshop or Fireworks or, like, Procreate, um, I didn't have the option to just change one part, so I had to erase, like, a lot of the character and start over. And that's something that you kind of want to avoid, uh, if possible. So, for his snout, we're going to go for this, uh, kind of brown color. Right. Nope. Sorry, I should have, uh, put that inside of this, yeah. On a new layer. Nice. All right, yeah, so here's his little, cute little brown snout. And like I said, since this is a 2D game character, you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff. Now, I can do 3D games, um, but I really, I prefer to work in 2D now because I like being, I like the ability to be able to work on my, uh, on my iPad. Right, and just do game art on the fly um, whenever I want, whenever it's convenient. So with 3D, they don't really have any good 3D artwork apps for iPad or anything yet. Uh, this, I think they're still kind of working on those. So for uh, for 3D art, I have to use like Blender and stuff like that. So I have to be like near my PC, um, you know, and that takes for me that takes a lot of time, um, unnecessary time. But uh, if I'm doing 2D characters, well, I can basically draw 2D anywhere. And uh, that's the advantage of working this way and uh, working in uh, 2D. So I'm going to go ahead and draw his, put his tooth here as well. Right, and it's like... Uh, 
3.42, but I don't think people are going to get too mad at me for leaving my laundry in like 10 minutes. Alright, and then I'm going to curve this guy in. Curve this out. Alright, and yeah, there's his tooth. I do kind of want to make it look sharp, so, so I think that's kind of good for him. Alright, yeah, so here's our like honey badger's mm, snout. Alright, and for lines, uh, his snout, I think we're going to use this uh, darker color line. So we're just kind of going to go around everything with this, except for his tooth. His tooth will give that a uh, kind of a gray color, I think. Yeah, we'll give that a gray. All right, now it's uh, time to change the colors for everything else. So um, it's now we're going to go with a kind of lighter brown, I think. I'm not really finding the color that I want, so I'm going to click on this brown, and I'm going to go to the wheel, and still not really seeing what I want. Hmm. Alright, I might edit that later. Uh, hmm, that's a little bit too yellow. Okay, I'm going to go for a soft yellow for this. And then I'm going to go ahead and bump the opacity up to 100. All right, and uh, for his scars, his scars should probably be about the same uh, color. Uh, for his tooth, that's an easy. I'm just, just going to leave that as white and bump that up 100. Uh, his nose, uh, brown is fine, 100. Is brown fine? No, brown isn't fine. I lied. Uh, <laughs> his nose will be this color as well. All right. Alright, so, and now we're going to do the same thing for his battle scars over here. Alright, so his battle scars will be the same color as his, uh, as his snout down here. Yeah. Alright. Ah, that's right, I haven't done his eyebrows yet. But, you know, I don't necessarily, I mean, I need to do one eyebrow over here. Um... Let's go ahead and look at his skin tone. So uh, his skin tone, um, traditionally, if uh, we look at the character, like um, the previous character, or the previous version of the character that I had uh, created for him, um, actually had his uh, skin tone as kind of like a, a dark gray. But I uh, realized that that was a mistake when I was kind of running around in a darker background. So, um, this time, we're going to give his skin, cone, skin tone the same, or, yeah, maybe the same color as his, uh, nose. Yeah, and we're gonna bump that up to 100. Let's see how that works. Alright. So, he's gonna be a little bit greener this time than, uh, his previous iteration. Alright, and there we go. However, I didn't draw his lines, so I'm going to go ahead and draw his lines, uh, drop his lines on him. Hmm. So, in this case, uh, I'm going to make his lines a little bit uh, darker, so I'm going to go with a dark gray uh, for, for his lines. And I think I'm actually going to increase the size of these lines as well. Uh, the reason I'm increasing the size is because I'm going to increase these to about like maybe a... Let's try a three and see if that's too much. All right, so let's go with three. Actually, no, that's not enough. Uh, because remember, this character is going to be running around inside of an environment. So let's try five. Let's see what five looks like on him. Uh, it still looks a little bit light. Alright, so let's change the alpha on this. And re-highlight, redo this. Okay, yeah, that looks better. So, yeah, that, that's enough for him to stand out, I believe. Alright, cool. So, this is what his um, face looks like. It, it really, 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 really doesn't take that long. To uh, make this, I'm just making this process a lot long, a lot longer than it should be. However, what I am going to do right now is I'm going to do this one little thing 
that's gonna make a lot of difference so we haven't really seen any animation yet but uh, that's because I haven't like I actually put any animation in here however if I want this mouse to move I'm gonna move his pivot point to right here and now like as a preview I can actually move his make him talk by moving this part of his face up and down right uh, and technically speaking this part of his face should probably come on this uh, come around here um, because we are going to want to place it on top of his uh, goggles right so I'm just gonna do a nice like paste here and I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna zoom in so I can see better mm. all right and just kind of move him move his snout right there mm. all right yeah this is much better all right so now you can kind of see where we're going with this animation thing uh, and um, for this particular type of game this is actually the kind of look that I'm going for um, because of the nature of the game so uh, let me go ahead and zoom out of this so his glasses don't move um, his glasses are kind of fixed right now he can chat if he needs to you know <laughs> or you can get a jaw broken like completely broken off <laughs> yeah so this gives me a little bit of like a uh, leeway for animation, right? Mm. Right. So, uh, and his goggles are, yeah, right where they need to be. I think I'm gonna put the pivot point of those over here, uh, in case he wants, in case he decides that he wants to kind of flip them up and expose his non-existent eyes at the moment. Yeah. So, but we'll uh, just kind of put it over here. Mm. And let me save. And I think uh, that's going to be it for right now. Um, I've kind of got multiple things going on mentally at the moment. Anyway, I've got to go get my laundry before some old lady comes and takes it out and dumps it on the floor. Uh, which doesn't really happen in Japan, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let's see, his face. I'm going to oh, I'm gonna move his hair layer up above his, uh, his face, by the way. Yeah. Okay. All right, hold on. Ah, that's right, I moved it to the Battle Scars layer, never mind. Yeah, sorry about that. I was like chatting and I uh, moved the, I put the battle scars on the wrong layer. Um, so I put those on his face layer. So let me move this down here next. Uh, this goes to layer five. Yeah, this right here, right there. Okay, yeah, that's where everything is supposed to be. I was wondering why his hair was like sitting behind him when we changed that earlier. All right, yeah, so he can talk. Uh, and if I, if necessary, I can, like, put the pivot point for his hair right here, and, like, when he takes damage, I can make his hair go, like, forward or back or whatnot. I think I would, like, probably put the pivot point right there. And this gives me, like, some options to kind of play with his hair, you know, uh, which we will turn white and stuff like that. Alright, so, yeah, that's gonna be it for this, uh, stream. So, um, I'm gonna have to, like, uh, cook dinner in a little bit anyway. So... But uh, his face is basically almost done. We'll like, or his head is almost done. We'll just need to do his ears and basically just color in his hair. He's only got one ear to do uh, at the moment. Uh, however, I'm going to create two ears because um, when I animate them, I might want to show the uh, other ear behind him. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing when I come back later. I'll go ahead and switch uh, his hair over to white as well. And uh, make that a little bit more transparent so we can see through it. Alright, so uh, I hope that you like these, um, these videos and I hope that they're useful for you uh, when it comes to like, creating game characters. Uh, if so, then like, please like, like, subscribe, and um, subscribe to my channel. Then like, check out my Patreon page because actually that's where I'm going to be putting most of these tutorials anyway. So I'm only going to do like, a, few of, a few tutorials and then I'll do like, the rest of them and put them on my Patreon for my patrons. So, um, yeah, go check those out. Um, if you haven't stopped by my uh, online store, check out my Nerdy Urges online store, uh, where I'm selling, like, uh, cute characters, uh, original game characters and stuff from the games that we make. Uh, so that's nerdyurges.com. 
And uh, also, like, um, you know, uh, if you like to play games, play, play free video games, you can stop by my itch.io page, uh, which I will, like, uh, put a link to in my um, bio. All right, so that's it for now. Daddy's got to go cook dinner. And then I will be back on later today with, um, with Dreams for PS4. All right, so everyone have a